Gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Titanic Tuesday with the Canadian Dota League. I am Stamos Liz, and with me as always is my good old buddy, Mr. 3PO. 3PO, I have a sneaking suspicion that you're doing awesome today. How are you doing? You know, I would normally say I'm super fantastic, but today has been an interesting day of things breaking. Uh, all across the internet, things are broken. I, I run a little gaming website, uh, which uh, the server was taken offline by the host earlier today. I'm fairly sure somebody kicked the plug out. And I've run into like two or three different people. A buddy of mine is PlayStation 3 wouldn't start. It's just been one of those days. So I'm going to just reserve the super for now, and I'm just, I'm just fantastic. How are you doing? You know, I, uh, I'm PG Keen. I had some um, delicious skewer, which is a Nordic yogurt. Delicious, high in protein. Highly suggest it. And uh, I'm really, really excited about some Titanic Tuesday tonight. That's good to hear. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it honestly, um, it's a high point of my week. I really love casting. I love being here with you. I love having our viewers kind of give us some advice and at the same time enjoying the cast as well. So I'm excited about tonight. I really like watching random players play, you know? It's uh, it's fun stuff. Good times are had by all. Yeah, yeah. So I found a game. I went ahead and jumped in. It was in pre-game. So if you want to follow me in there, I'm loading it up right now. Uh, just as a side note, a little bit of announcement on my part. Uh, two of them, actually. First off, happy day after Canada Day, everybody. I hope that you had a fantastic Canada Day and that your wildest dreams came true. I know mine did. Because I'm here with you. Indeed, indeed. We are 146 years old as a country. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Going into the, uh, I think it's 29th year of the, no, pardon me, the 31st year of the signing of the uh, Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. That's right. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, another announcement, not so grand as uh, 146, was that right? Did I get mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, uh, so I, I think I'm going to start up a uh, kind of a solo segment. Uh, although Graham or three PO, goodness gracious, your anonymity is just going to uh, be gone here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm going to start up a segment probably on Saturdays around the afternoon, and I think the segment's going to be designed about around replaying or watching replays that you, the watchers, send us. So you can send us some replay ideas. We'll have a, an email address set up and a couple rules associated with that. Watch those replays and then give tips as to how you can kind of play a character better, a lane better, or just better overall, at, maybe at a certain time period of the game, getting advice like that. So 3PU, are you in this game with me here? I am indeed. All right, it looks like it's just started. I'm going to go ahead and list off who we've got on both teams just real fast. We've got a Rubik Slardar, looks like a Gyrocopter Disruptor, and an Outworld Devourer on the Radiant team. And on the Dire side, we've got an Invoker, <coughs> Marana, excuse me there, Lion, a, a Queen of Pain, and a Nature's Prophet who is currently wandering around in the jungle. And uh, it looks to be, that's a huge caster match right there. Lots of intelligence-based heroes out. So this will be an interesting and fun game. There we go. Having a bit of a delay there as we uh, got into the game, but we are here now. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Interesting here. We've got Disruptor, and he has Sentry Wards in his inventory, but he has not yet used them. Not very useful. Uh, we've got an Invoker and Lion up top going against Slardar and a Rubix, who is attempting to prevent that Nature's Prophet jungle, or at least see where, if he can see what's going on there. In the middle we've got the Outworld D Destroyer excuse me, Devourer. Goodness, you and I both mess that one up all the time. <laughs> Odie. <laughs> Odie versus the Queen of Pain. And uh, Marana is solo down below. Disruptor is trying to do some lane pulling there again. Has not used the sentries. Not in and uh, no sentry out actually for either team with the exception of the, uh, the Radiant of Time. Looks like a lot of the action is just taking place up top right now. There's a bit of a careful dance here for uh, the rest of our players. <clears throat> Gyrocopter is getting some okay farm in that bottom lane. Nothing too significant thus far. Uh, he's sitting around 11. Nature's Prophet, of course, has more. That jungle is all his, though, so... Lion and Slardar are coming over here to mess up the creek pole.
And uh, I think he's getting a little antsy there and using his stun. He should probably actually wait. Up, oh, Queen of Pain Rubik coming is up. in a little bit of trouble here. And we'll see. Uh, despite being popped up, Queen of Pain will get that first kill. And ex excellent kill by Queen of Pain there. She had grabbed a haste and You can still see the effects of that. Ran up there. Guess there was no MIA called, which does happen quite often, I would say, in these matches. And uh, gets an early first blood. For those of you joining us at home, that is Stormageddon, Dark Lord of All, my cat, who is saying hello. And why wouldn't he? Really? He sees Dota being played, and he says, you know what, it's time to actually tap on that keyboard. <clears throat> I don't know if you're seeing this, by the way. Down bottom, Marana is just getting hosed. I mean, there's just nothing she can do right now. She's uh, level two. That is a bit of a gap there. Yes. Yeah, I mean, Disruptor, the support, is level four. Marana just, she's not close enough to get experience. She's hanging back. She keeps running. So you're Marana at this point. You're stuck at level two going up against uh, Disruptor and Gyrocopter. What do you do? You don't get yourself in this position in the first place, to be honest. <laughs> I would be calling for uh, Queen of Pain to come assist, but, I, you know, it's it's a bit late. I think she's hoping that the lane pushes down, but she, yeah, I mean, the lane keeps pushing back really strong because she then has the tower assisting with these uh, creeps up here. She did get all those last hits, though, so that's not so bad. But I'll tell you what, that gyrocopter at level 5, he is in a prime position to kind of rip her a new one at any point. Gyrocopter slamming up now on the, uh, the kill list. He's got 26 last hits, 8 denies against Marana. And then Outworld Destroyer has a significant amount with that 25. Queen of Pain's not doing so bad. She's up there with 18, but uh, the getting that first blood has really helped her out. Looks yeah, and like, here comes uh, the help. Yeah, we'll see uh, all three of them here. We've got Queen of Pain, Marana, and Lion coming in. There's Excellent. Disruptor, caught yeah, out. Arrow. I don't know if you saw that. Marana fired an arrow and just, you know, pegged him, pegged him. Lion got there in time to solidify the stun and yet another kill for the dire team that's the help i'm talking about calling for help getting that she's up to level four now she's you know just a little bit behind and evoker playing it safe sticking it out in the bush here and uh doing his best to soak up the experience without actually putting himself in too much danger looks like uh gyrocopter might be in a bit of trouble there's the stun out from lion and uh with a call down still nothing doing Despite the fact that Disruptor is back, uh, that was it. Yeah, that's a, that's a big loss there, too. It's a lot of money that he just lost. He uh, had not purchased anything. You know, he, he could have bought things ahead of time, didn't do so, and lost some money from that. Whereas Marana has actually come out, and she's level 5 now. So that's... Strong turnaround. Yeah, coming out on top there. I, I think she'll she's going to end up being fine in this match. We'll hope at least. Looks like she's gone back to uh, heal up, do a little bit of shopping, leaving Lion in the lane for her. Yeah, speaking of shopping, let's take a look at gold real fast, and then hop on over. I'll take a look at some items while you continue to look at the action going on. Uh, gold Graph had a, a significant spike for the Radiant team, likely due to Gyrocopter hogging all of that farm down below. But uh, the recent kills has put them in a nasty position. Invoker taking a little bit of damage up here up top but not enough. Slardar and Rubik not able to finish those kills. So not a significant gold advantage at this point, and not a significant experience advantage, but that graph did take a significant turn for the Dire team. And I think that's significant. Yeah, I think it's significant. I mean, it's a pretty fairly sharp, jagged edge. Don't you? I like it. <laughs> Taking a look at some of the items here, it looks like, yep, Nature's Prophet picked up that hand of minus. That'll be ensuring he gets farm even faster. Not only does it give him a faster attack speed, but he'll be able to convert some of those creeps into gold. Advice, by the way, if you're a hand of minus user, use it on the higher level creeps. And there's Disruptor uh, 
being pulled down with that uh, that stun. Call down out from Gyrocopter to see what he can pull out, but just nothing doing there. Yeah, he uh, Disruptor dropped incredibly fast there to all of that damage. I think he got arrowed. He definitely had the Shadow Strike hit him, and then Lion stun also. Too much damage. The power of some of those intelligence-based characters too. Queen of Pain plus Lion. Nasty little cop though. This is interesting. Slardar against Queen of Pain with a double damage rune. The stun's out there, and Queen of Pain will blink out of it and uh, pop away. Yeah, it looks like the other team or the other members of the Dire team were paying attention to, able to get out of there before any significant damage was done. Queen of Pain though, she's ready to fight. Level eight has not picked up her ultimate Sonic Wave yet. Interesting choice. Ooh, Ooh long distance arrow there on uh, Slardar. We'll see Queen of Pain pop in. Disruptor uh, blocking them in there. Well, double damage does not matter as Disruptor and Slardar drop to Marana and an excellent, excellent blink in by Queen of Pain. And Lion stunned. <laughs> <laughs> Lion definitely playing a support Lion this game. Invisibility is out for Marana. I believe that was her ultimate. Just okay. securing that exit there for uh, Lion, making sure that pursuit wasn't happening. Indeed. Invoker's sitting on a nice little pile of cash here. Probably should spend it at this point. That's a that's a lot of money to be holding. Mm. Although he has not seemed to be in any significant danger. Though he may be here with uh, Slardar and we're a bit coming up behind him. We'll I'll tell you... He you know, before this action starts, I'm a little little disappointed with this Outworld Destroyer. He should be running around and ganking by level 6. Speaking of which, Nature's Prophet's in a lot of trouble up top. Fury and Under Siege popped up a Telekinesis and put down. And at the bottom we have uh, Queen of Pain getting a kill on Gyrocopter, so... But Queen of Pain herself in trouble. There's a couple of hits from the tower, and the tower will do it. Giving the kill to uh, split amongst a Gyrocopter and Disruptor. Yeah, Lion uh, died there as well. I didn't actually see what happened to Lion. I was watching Nature's Prophet get caught. Morano might have been a cheeky there, leaping in under the tower. No creeps at her back, and we'll just make it out alive. Nature's Prophet porting in, getting a kill on Slardar. Really, really nice kill there. Good job on Nature's Prophet, paying attention to the map, having that map awareness. One thing I'll note, speaking of map awareness, he did, however, uh, perish in a way that I, I don't think he should have. Uh, it was very obvious that World Destroyer went up top toward him. There was no smoke. It wasn't a smoke gank. If he had been paying just a little bit of attention, he would have seen that there was a... Uh, a possible gink on him. And the port in from uh, Disruptor and Slarder there to help pick it up as well. Yeah, opportune time to push that mid tower, but I don't think they have the ability to see that uh, nobody's there. Looks like Invoker dropped Slarder. Yeah, taking a lot of punishment from both Disruptor and Slarder there. Really. Wasn't a terribly exciting fight. It was a you're overextended. You should get out, and you didn't. I noticed he didn't actually spend his money either, so he lost, you know, a good one two hundred gold with really no reason. He could have had that spent. Yeah, Rubik just again taking a ton of punishment there from Lion and from Queen of Pain, trying to use telekinesis to get out of it. Just couldn't do it. Excuse me, just real fast here. Uh, Nature's Prophet was in a little bit of trouble. It looks like Slaughter's not actually going to push the issue, but he did come up and kind of break up some of Nature's Prophet's uh, farming there. Sorry about that, Rubio. Quite all right. We've got Queen of Pain coming in on Gyrocopter here. She will blink in. Toss a few daggers out. And we'll actually stop the bomb before it hits her. There's the uh, arrow out from Marana, but misses uh, Disruptor on the, the way goal. through. We've got a, a pinch here between uh, Rubik coming in from behind, and there's Lion with that finger. Ooh, that's a whole lot of damage there. Slardar's coming in here from behind as well. The invisibility, however, is out. Marana's ult is, does not matter. Slardar, you popped his ult on in time. Significant counter, and we may have an invoker in trouble here too. Stun Strong does go stun out from Marana, but uh, too late. Outworld Destroyer securing that kill. Queen of Pain coming back in for some reason, and also dropping. Yeah, 
Interesting trade-off there. I'm not sure that went in the way, uh, in the favor of the dire at all. In fact, I'm yeah. sure it didn't go in the favor of the dire at all. <laughs> yeah, it definitely didn't. You know, uh, those are the first couple of kills for the Radiant team that were significant, though. That being said, we should have been seeing this a little bit earlier. I mean, our, our World Destroyer, excuse me, Devourer, goodness gracious, is a nasty, nasty ganker. I mean, he does so much damage. His Arcane Orb ability, when mixed with his uh, Essence Aura, he just gets so many awesome, powerful attacks. He's fantastic at ganking. I personally, I do not put that many points into Astral Imprisonment. I would probably have Rubik here, uh, just on top lane, managed to get Telekinesis out to give Queen of Pain a little bit of pause, but it looks like they're just going to trade blows here, and that Scream is out uh, to finish him off. Yeah, and Invoker was up there too to uh, help secure it. They were thinking about heading up there, but I think they're going to try to push this middle tower, which they may find a little bit more difficult with Mirana and Lion sitting behind it, waiting to strike. That bottom lane completely abandoned right now. Gyrocopter having a a good old time. Yeah, although his farm has not been significant, he dropped down majorly once he started getting ganked down there. So, and the dire wave will roll on the T1 tower top lane. Invoker's Clever in hot totally. pursuit of uh, Invoker and Radiant flipping it around at the last second. Yeah, besides against, I think you saw Nature's Prophet was there as well. And did not want to press that issue there. Lion playing full support here, but not really doesn't have much farm. Uh, I would I would still be trying to farm just a little bit because in order to truly support to get that mechanism and to, to get those arcane boots, it would be it would behoove you to uh, just get a little bit of farm at this point. I would expect it would probably behoove Centaur a little bit more, but, you know, we'll take it for Lion. He'd be clopping, not behooving. Oh, let's not go there. <laughs> Quit horsing around. A little bit of fight here in the middle. Marana is caught, but the stun is out too soon. And by there Slark. is the ult. The ultimate goes out. Lion's still in trouble here, though. Slardar hexed, and we'll see Marana do what damage she can, and we will see it finished off. Here, fish, fish, fish. However, Gyrocopter comes in from behind, gets that kill on Lion, securing that. That call down once again, uh, wow, actually catching uh, Queen of Pain along with Rubik. <laughs> Nature's Prophet getting the kill on Rubik there, but a giant meteor plowing in and slamming into... Uh, uh, Rubik there. That's quite funny. The meatball of doom. Yeah. Interesting, another trade there where, again, I don't think the Dyer got the best of it. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. So mid lane, we'll see uh, Invoker right up against Disruptor. Slardar trying to push that bottom lane. While everybody kind of tries to take hold of their bearings and figure out what the heck just happened. Slardar and... Queen of Pain going at it now. Teleport in now from Outworld to uh, Devour. And Queen of Pain thinking the better of it here. She may get caught by that Astral in prison, though. That fight would have been uh, substantially better for the Radiant team, though, if Sardar was not just a little bit early on his stun. Sardar now, now actually taking damage. plenty of damage from Queen of Pain and Invoker. However, his team is all here. I think we're going to see the first tower drop, though, as Nature's Prophet starts pushing up top. Uh oh, Invoker caught now by Disruptor, and that ultimate by Disruptor is out as well. They better get out of there. This is a time to hightail it. Lion popped up, and we will see the stolen arrow finish him off from Rubik. Morana yeah, dropping as well. Yeah, the tide may actually be turning here. Well, it does help that Nature's Prophet is going unopposed right now, so... We may see, though, however, this this bottom tower drop as well. It may get a, a trade-off. And a teleport in here. I don't think that, that can save him, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I think that he's still in range for a stun. 
So even trade there for towers, but uh, kills definitely going in favor of the Radiant. Yeah, the Dire team has lost a little bit of team play, it seems like. Uh, one thing to point out, and this happens with Nature's Prophets sometimes in these random matches, this is why he's one of those heroes that a lot of people don't like in matches. He's not really joined the team that much. He did to take a kill early on, but... The uh, blink in there from Queen of Pain against Slardar was just a painful, painful hit for him. She'll blink in again, and we'll finish it off with the scream. Um, Radiant's top tower is under attack. Yeah, nice on Queen of Pain there. I think she's going to be able to... Well, she is seen, actually. Yeah, it took a lot of damage by Outworld De Devour. Again, that Arcane Orb just ripping, ripping her to shreds. We've got uh, Lion Invoker and Morana coming around from behind on the Radiant. Their intended victim, probably Disruptor. Bit. Yeah, it looks like that or Gyrocopter here. Gyrocopter, in fact, taking a lot of damage from Invoker. Nice little combo there. But uh, Disruptor caught up by the shop by, uh, by a lion, and will be sent back to the well. Gyrocopter not able to get out in time. He does purchase the BKB, however. Probably a great purchase with both Lion and Invoker doing a lot of damage to him. We'll see if it matters. We may see this tower drop, though. Bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, it's done yeah, like dinner. Yeah. Yep. Radiant's Turkin dinner. Well, we've got four Radiant team members uh, rolling up mid. I think they mean to take that tower. And they yeah, don't let me to take no for an answer. Let me point out, Nature's Prophet, once again, only Dyer's one assist. Slardar's looking for him now. Won't find him, though. In fact, I can't even find him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's back at the wall. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, go through just real fast, take a look, see at some items. Slaughter are not really with anything significant. He does have his power treads, but I think that being killed in all these fights, it's really taken away a lot of his gold count. Again, guys, purchase small things, even if it's going to give you a little bit of survivability, but, you know, bracers... Ooh, there was a beautifully timed meteor there on Disruptor. He was in prison just for a moment and was put down by uh, the entire, well, almost the entire, dire team. Miranda, of course, stunned immediately afterwards and uh, taking the brunt of the counter-attack. She will buy back and get that ult out, uh, saving the rest of her team quite, uh, quite a bit of anguish. But it's just going to be a bit of a mess down here as Slardar takes the full brunt of that scream. That was some hefty, hefty damage. Call down out again, not catching anyone this time. Queen of yeah, Pain a... fleeing away, but she'll blink back in and she's going to go toe to toe with that World of Hour and will actually take it. Miranda was coming in from behind, so it looked like that was a done fight before it began. Disruptor now taking everything that the Dire team has to offer in the way of right click damage. There you go. Much better team fight on the Dire side there. Able to really convert and, and work together. This Invoker is really good too. He's, he's switching his spells fast. He's getting spells that he needs to use to actually. Uh, do some crowd control as well as hefty damage. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. That will be the third tower of the Radiant dropping. Slaughter are just anxious to pursue whoever he can at this point. Was going after Triant, uh, pardon me, not Triant, um, Nature's Prophet. Then wanted yeah. to pick on Invoker, then was trying to chase Morana, couldn't quite figure out where he wanted to go and what he wanted to do. And this I mean, is a hero that does need some items here, and, and he doesn't really have any. Slardar is who I'm talking about. He isn't purchasing things that will help him initiate in these fights better. His farm is really low, sitting at only 40 kills overall. It's really going to come down to Outworld Devour and uh, Gyrocopter and how well they can stay alive and convert some of these kills. Our old Devourer kind of doing a little supporty here. He's got Mechanism and also has a Four Staff. Four Staff not really too supporty. I think he's using it more for himself to get in and also bring kills to him. Disruptor really only has Mana Boots at this point. 
Rubik also has mana boots, so nothing too significant on either of those heroes. Lion finally kind of building that mechanism. Looks like he's got the headrest. Invoker might be in a bit of a pinch here, uh, being disrupted there by a disruptor. Calldown will actually catch him once, and twice, and that'll finish it off. Miranda doing what she can there with the ult, but Lion still caught out of position and will just, again... Big overextension on Invoker's part there. Yeah. Uh, I think he saw Disruptor thinking, uh, you know, there's a there's a soft target, like you said, not a lot of items on Disruptor right now, and... Yep. It seems whichever team manages to get five together usually will dominate the fight, but uh, it's been more often the, the Radiant there than the, uh, the Dire. In the meantime, uh, Nature's Prophet pushing that top lane, attracting Radiance quite an audience here. Experience-wise, the uh, the Dire team is only about 2,000 ahead, but they do have a significant gold advantage right now. Despite that current tower kill, they're still sitting over well over 5,000 gold. So the Nature's Prophet right now getting himself stuck inside that ring of trees. Uh, with Slardar, that's that was less of a I'm not stuck in here with you, you're stuck in here with me moment. But Invoker <laughs> will come in and will do some damage. Uh, the finger out from Lion and pardon me, not finger earth spike, I beg your pardon. Yeah, he still has that finger uh, ready to be used. You know, uh, Nature's Prophet did something there that I, I'm really proud of him for. He stayed in that fight. A lot of people would leave. They'd be so low on hit points, they're like, you know what, I'm going to bounce. You guys have fun. He stayed around and uh, helped secure that kill. In fact, got the kill with Slardar. So so you'd say he was probably swift as a coursing river. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> with all the strength of a great typhoon. Indeed. In the meantime, Queen of Pain pushing that bottom lane. Outworld Devourer coming in to see what he can do about it. Mysterious as the dark side of Marana's moon. Easy tiger. Light shadow. Moonlight shadow. Come on. Uh, I'm good with it. <laughs> so, I, I guess the... Oh, here, hold on real fast. Invoker catching... Uh, Disruptor, Disruptor uh, taking that, that arrow right from across the way there. Disruptor had 16 hit points when he left that fight. Alright, so here's my question. Murata just cast her ultimate. Mm -hmm. Does that mean... Oh, 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 real fast. Nature's Prophet gets caught with the uh, Slardar ult. Rubik taking uh, the time. damage there. Yeah, these two came back to try and help. I don't know why they did that. They should have just taken the lick, let Nature's Prophet drop. Slardar continuing to pursue Invoker, deep, deep in enemy territory. I do think, however, this actually benefited the Dire, even though they lost two. They, however, they did it. They pushed that bottom tower. So that was Queen of Pain. There you go, Queen of Pain pushing that bottom tower, and that's huge. So, okay, my question for you is this: Anytime Arana uses her ultimate, it's called Moonlight Shadow. Hmm. Does that become, since they've become invisible from that, do they become mysterious as the dark side of the moon? I would say so, yeah. So they all become men. <laughs> it happens. I mean, I've seen plenty of Japanese cartoons where that is sort of a thing. Uh, that's what I've got for you. <laughs> I don't know if it was actually Japanese. First off, I think it takes place in China. No, no, I'm speaking of other cartoons where that happens. I think oh. it was Ranma Half? I see. <laughs> I like... I'm saying that right. I think that you don't know where Milan took place. No, Milan took place in Australia. That was uh, very clear. <laughs> yes, the Aborigines. Yeah, yeah. Fighting against the ancient cons. Yeah. The didgeridoo played a very strong role in that particular movie. That was Cumberpatch, I thought. That's right. <laughs> he would make a great Genghis Khan. I uh, no, no. Spoilers, sweetie. So up top, we've got uh, Nature's Prophet just now. hanging Whoa. around. Miranda trying to jump away, but she will jump straight into Slardar, who will stun her, and uh, that's it, really. It was in and out, up and down. Yep, you know, they keep getting caught by Slardar. Slardar is a perfect counter to this ultimate. It's just not it's not doing them any favors. They think that they're like, oh, I'm, I'm invisible right now, and they don't realize that they're not. Slardar can see everything. See everything. 
and he's finally able to get a little bit of farm. So his choice was the Staff of Wizardry. An interesting choice, but we'll see what he's looking to build with that. I don't know at the top of my head. Invoker coming straight in, going after it, World Devourer, popped up by Rubik with the Telekinesis. We will see Queen of Pain blink in. Scream is out. Rubik now caught on his own. The Meatball will miss but roll. And Rubik will get away for the moment. Slardar coming in. We'll see the alt out and the Earth Spike out on Slardar. There's a ton of damage that's just got dished out, and we will see uh, him head back to the well. Invoker almost done, best. but uh, Queen of Pain will come in on Disruptor, and despite the fact that he was going to make a strong getaway, we'll finish him off. Nature's Prophet almost dropping the creeps there, but uh, finding a way out. And the arrow does actually catch Slardar on a long range fight. The jump in from Marana. You'll see. Uh, Despite the fact that he bought back. That's got to hurt. Yeah, we're going to see Outworld drop here too if he's not careful. They lost the tower, they lost five different kills there, and they may actually lose another one here if Outworld is not careful. He will flee. And with good reason. Gyrocopter coming in to see what he can do about this creep wave, but it's just, it's ugly. He's sitting on 2,600 gold. He's got a demon edge. What do you think he's going to purchase right now? Gyrocopter's got the demon edge? Yeah, he's got a demon edge in his inventory right now. Hmm. That's uh, probably Chrysalis. After this. You mean like the Daedalus? Yeah. Hitting the Daedalus? Uh, I think that's where he's probably yeah. going. Yeah, he could go there. I want to see a divine rapier. I, I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna. Yeah, he man. Might. He might. I'm. I'm thinking for myself. I'd probably. I'd probably date this up. <laughs> because I'm a coward, and kind of sad. He hasn't really strengthened his attack speed so much. The Daedalus is would be a strange choice. Ooh. Nope, yep, he went for the Monkey King bar. I was going to say that he could go for that. Interesting choice, because I don't know, I'm trying to think here, I don't think that that actually really counters anybody in this match. It just allows him to kind of push the towers at the base better. It does have a mini stun, which is great, so... Meanwhile, Roche uh, taking the ire Old of run. the dire. <laughs> and uh, Morana gets an extra lease on life. Queen of Pain uh, has just been popping all over the place here, pushing that bottom lane out and uh, looking to push the top lane out. We'll see Disruptor and Slardar see... Uh, they see her and they're headed top top lane. Well, looks like it's just Slardar for now. Silence is out. She will blink in. We'll see some right-click damage. Hex is there, and uh, that is Slardar. Thank you very much. Nature's Prophet stole that kill, however, with his ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's also, he, he's got a Scythe of Vice. There's a lot of Scythe of Vice out. I mean, there's so much control right now on this uh, Dire team. It feels like an episode of Get Smart. It, you know, it feels like Animal Farm is what I was thinking. Oh, there's that Scythe of Vice out on... Uh, who did we have there? Sorry. Gyrocopter. Uh, there's Gyrocopter. And the call down will, will catch... Just Lion, the second time around. But we've got uh, three in pursuit of Murana. Great tornado there from Invoker, giving Murana an extra release on life. The arrow that was stolen is going to miss, but the heat seeking missile, missile is going after Murana. I just <laughs> don't know what's going to happen here. Oh, she's gone. No, yeah. Well, she's got a bottle. She just has to use the bottle. Yep. And oh, she's fine. Makes it out. She had a bottle there, she had a uh, magic wand, I think she was alright. I, I thought she was going to drop there. Queen of Pain currently being pursued by Slarder will blink away, but... Uh... She's a beefy Queen of Pain too. Double damage picked up by Marana. Let's take a look at Radiant items. Slardar not really with anything. Uh, still with the Staff of Wizardry. Way to go, buddy. Uh, Gyrocopter did pick up that Monkey King bar. Interesting choice again on his part. He does have a 35% chance to mini-bash, which is pretty powerful. The pain seeing uh, Rubik down in the river will blink, and it's just dagger, dagger, right-click, and he will make a getaway, but 
showing Rubik that he shouldn't hang around. The wow, Morana blinks through the uh, the spear, heads in, and gets the kill. There are a couple of really awesome kills going on there. Uh, Disruptor got caught, got hexed, and just dropped so friggin' fast. He was he was dropped like a pancake at a Saturday morning breakfast. I, I like it. I, you've you've got a feel for uh, for Ribic there. That was uh, good timing on the on the arrow, but uh, unfortunately, it was even better timing uh, from Queen of Pain. We've got some towers being pushed now, and nobody really to help defend. And we're going to see that uh, last tier 2 tower drop on the Radiant side, and uh, the scheme has taken a significant turn in favor of the Dire now. Lots of, lots of solid control on this team. And Rubik, of course, being popped up with a tornado, hit by a meatball, and dropped by the rest of the team. Kind of chilling in that silence a little bit longer than they should have. I don't think it's going to matter. Queen of Pain getting the kill on Disruptor, and now Outworld Devour in a lot of trouble. Actually, Slard are now in a lot of trouble. Coldman will actually do some damage this time, and we will see the Aegis go out. Uh, Lion, however, will drop. And this is just, it's a, it's a massacre down here as Queen of Pain joins the land of the dead. Marana dying for a second time, and Voker deciding this is really not where I want to be. And heading back towards his base. Tucking into the trees briefly. That was, uh, that was a rough exchange for the Dire. Obviously, you know, very excited to, uh, to get that T3 tower down pushing deep into the base, and really not giving a whole heck of a mind to uh, folks like Gyrocopter using their Black King bar. It wasn't even exchanged, though. They they got three kills. They died. They had three people die. So, in all fairness, it wasn't necessarily a total loss on their part. They also snagged that tower after getting four of the other players down. And Gyrocopter still has a significant amount of farm here. He's at 208 creeps killed, the majority of those being lane creeps. And it looks like we might uh, see Invoker just a, in a little bit of trouble here. He will pop up at World Devourer after being uh, astrally imprisoned. Didn't Disruptor actually managed to pen him, pen, to pen him in, but uh, we will see him drop with under the watchful eye of four members of the Radiant team. That was a, almost a foregone conclusion at that point. Yeah, Disruptor had a really good glimpse that he used on Invoker. Glimpse, of course, sucking that hero back, making them uh, kind, of, kind of similar to Kunkka's map, basically. Or X marks the spot, I should say. Yeah, it was kind of a mistake on Invoker's part. He was way overextended, shouldn't have been there. Strong time to use that glyph, giving them time to get back into position. And the uh, Radiant team not able to make anything of the advantage that they had there with a buyback by Invoker and a really, really solid use of a glyph. It's a defense game now for the Radiant team. They will need to defend. Again, you don't really see this Nature's Prophet doing much with the rest of the team. He's just kind of off on his own. He's pretty nasty. He's got the Daedalus. He's getting some mad crits. He's got a Scythe of Ice. This dude is able to take people out if he needs to giving them that strong split pushing ability. Um, I mean, you've got three mid lane, you've got Nature's Prophet up top and Queen of Pain saying, you know what, we're going to push bottom lane at the same time because why not? We can. Yeah, keep a lot of pressure on them. That top tower is already uh, significantly down. I think it's down, yep, it's got one fourth. Same with the bottom tower, actually. So both of those are in the prime position to get pushed. So those who don't know, uh, Queen of Pain here is rocking Scythe of Vice and the Orchid Malevolence, both of which are really nasty items. Orchid Malevolence, of course, giving a little bit of an attack speed increase as well as mana regen. But what it really does is it amplifies damage on a player by 30% and also silences them for 5 seconds. Really, really solid item to use to get some ganks and early kills. And easy to build, really easy to build. Uh, even if you're not getting a ton of farm, you just snag two, uh, I believe it's Oblivion staffs together, in order to uh, finish that off. 
And she also has that Scythe of Vice. Scythe of Vice is a little bit more difficult to finish. It is kind of expensive with an Ultimate Orb as well as a Mystic Staff. But it's able to hex players. puts them into a pig-like state where they're unable to actually do anything. We see two of those out on the, uh, the Dire team, giving them lots of control. We also have a Yule Scepter on Invoker, which puts the player uh, of his choosing into a tornado. Sucks them up into a tornado. I'm fairly sure I actually used a Scythe of Vice on myself the last time I sat down and watched television for a few hours. I put myself into a pig-like state and uh, had myself <laughs> some snacks. It was wonderful, really. Do you, do you like that term, pig-like state? Yeah, yeah. I was take, definitely taking extra damage uh, at that point. Queen of Pain sucked back by a Disruptor, but will be missed by uh, Rivik's Stolen Arrow. The heat-seeking missile is out on her. Um, she will do what she can to stop it, but no such joy. Uh, she has, however, managed to snag her Lincoln Sphere at this point. Invoker currently fleeing from Slardar, but uh, will not make it out. We'll see the call down out, which will actually get Queen of Pain this time. And both Lion and Mirana will continue to uh, to flee here. Meanwhile, Nature's, Nature's Prophet, Prophet has managed yep. to snag that uh, that tower. It looks like he may have stuck around a little long there. There's Telekinesis. We'll see him disrupted and. Ta -da. You know, to be fair, he didn't. I think he stuck around just long enough because he downed that Rax just in time. He was going for that melee Rax, he wanted to push. Fair enough. Uh, so, I, you know, it's it's fine to die there. In fact, the loss of those three players probably does not equal the loss of that tower and the loss of that Rax. I think the Dyer actually won. Lose some smoke on the front of the base and let Nature's Prophet push in. That's a very typical Nature's Prophet thing to do. We're going to toying with the idea of going after Gyrocopter and deciding better of it. Meanwhile, Outworld uh, Devourer will be the one to take the Tier 2 tower in mid lane for the Radiant. He has some hefty, hefty damage against players. His mana, peels, peel? His mana pool is huge. What I would do with him, I would definitely look to extend that a little bit more. I noticed that they also have the Gem of Truth sign here. Which well, like is interesting because it doesn't really seem like the uh, the Mirana ult has been difficult for them, but I suppose in a team fight that could be more of an issue. So why Probably not? much since Slardar can't necessarily place that on everybody. So Exactly. And, and Outworld definitely does have a lot of ability to move around the map. So. And we will see uh, Rubik put into a pig-like state, but uh, left alone by Queen of Pain. <laughs> You're just not going to let that term drop, are you? <laughs> I, uh, I think actually pig-like state is something that we're going to incorporate into the uh, the cast on a regular basis. <laughs> we may actually even abbreviate that to just PLS, you know, it's... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Do you have PLS? In my last match, I suffered from PLS. How do I counter it? Stop hamming it up. <laughs> Oh, you're baking me crazy. Yep, yep. I was just ribbing you. Yep. Barbecue. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> and top lane Queen of Pain doing her thing as the Radiant team looking for a fight, not finding it. You, next time, Next time you see him, catch Nature's Prophet when he is attacking something. I would think that he would have some mad tennis elbow from doing that, and he's attacking so fast. It this can't is why be you've got to stretch. And Slardar coming for Queen of Pain at this point. Look at that. Look at him in the middle. That staff's got to be heavy. Yeah. Queen she's of Pain just, just, just hanging out. She's yeah, got, she's she got no. teleport scroll, so she's got an escape, but I think she's looking to see if she can find herself a victim. It's kind of a... A farm, <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed this. Nature's Prophet picked up Hyperstone. <laughs> That's awesome! Look at this. He's gonna kill Slardar. That's because Slardar was in a pig-like state, and yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, with that uh, delightful uh, ring of trees there, that um, that was a pig and a poke. He, uh, yeah, he he hedged his bets there, and. Um, 
It did not turn out in his favor, did it? Famous oh, last me. words, leave me alone. Excuse me. It did not turn out in his flavor, did oh, it? Oh, there it is. And we'll see the Earthspike out on Gyrocopter. We'll see the arrow for a second stun, but both of them will back off. Nature's Prophet getting the Assault Curus. Because why not? That's why. Mm -hmm. I wish he would switch his boots. He just needs to switch these to agility at this point. I think he's doing it for hit points, which I get, but... He's about to hit that level 25, too, so he'll have max stat increase. The other thing he should get is, uh, well, I guess he doesn't really have room for it. I was going to say the uh, the armor reducing... Why do I always forget what that's called? The Medallion of Courage? No. Um, goodness gracious. It starts with a D. <laughs> Sadly, I've got nothing for you. I, I'll get it here. I, I'm Desolator. Goodness gracious. I seriously forget the name of that. And when I'm playing, I'm like, I need to get a Desolator. I remember it every time. Roshan dropping fast. This time, Queen of Pain gets to enjoy a second lease on life. Her image is just chilling out up top. Doing what she does. Slardar still not with any real significant item. He picked up a Force Staff. That's the last thing he has purchased since his boots and bottle. In the meantime, he could have been sitting on a nice five stack of drums. <laughs> right? The drum build, folks. Don't forget the drum build. All starts with a circlet and ends with the weeping of your foes. We call it the percussion of the apocalypse. You can play those drums while you place people in a pig light stake. Right. The drums beat when good men go to war. Another pig light state, New Jersey. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> I thought it was funny, so, you know, whatevs. Fair enough. I don't think we really have any pig like provinces. You know, maybe New Brunswick. And I mean that in a nice way. Pigs are actually very, very clean, and New Brunswick is a fairly clean place. Yeah. I must confess, my uh, my pig puns are a little weak. I need to take them out to pasture and get those hogs cleaned up. I was going to say you could get crackling on it. Crackling? Is that a, like a skin reference? Like Shishiro? Have you never had crackling? I no. No, I it's a, so. yeah, it's it's basically deep fried. Yeah, uh, pig skin. skin. Yeah, uh, sh sh shishirones. Yeah, that's that's what I would call those. Ah, okay, that's the Hispanic term. My uh, my parents are actually my parents. Excuse me, my what do you call it? Sub parents, secondary parents. You know, no, we're not on Dune, so I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh. The pig light stays must flow. Yeah. Uh, I had secondary parents growing up because my parents moved away for better jobs, which is awesome. I was really proud of them. Uh, surrogate parents. There you go. There you and go. And uh, the my father was Hispanic, so. Uh, yeah. Boy bueno. Pretty cool. You know, it's, it's interesting because I mean, obviously, Canada being a bilingual con uh, country, only one province is actually officially bilingual. And that is actually New Brunswick. So huh. there you go. Did you look that up just now? Nope. Slardar, of course, uh, going head-to-head -head against both Marana and Invoker, and just not finding the better of it. Really, this is, this is what we've been waiting for right here, is the end to this little dance. We will see uh, Nature's Prophet popped up with Telekinesis and pulled out uh, by that Force Staff that uh, pretty much everybody on the Radiant is carrying. You know, they kind of had to make a choice there. The choice was, do they go for Nature's Prophet? Probably the worst decision, since he is just absolutely rich and can buy back just like he did. He is also not really pushing an important lane, whereas Queen of Pain, for instance, just pushed the top tower, it's gone. And we will see Queen of Pain and Nature's Prophet doing the damage that they need to do up against uh, Rubik and Disruptor, but Queen of Pain uh, and Nature's Prophet. Well, just Nature's Prophet, pardon me, uh, paying the price for that. Queen of Pain just ducking out in time. Oh, that middle tower did not drop. It's so close. 42 hit points on that thing. 
Lion coming in just there to uh, get the Earth Spike out on at World Devour, giving them the time that they need to finish him off. Aegis used, Queen of Pain coming back up. Slardar once again using that stun. No, he got the stun off just in time, but it's not going to do anything. Queen of Pain's just going to sit here and push. Yep. She picked up a Lincoln Sphere, by the way. Awesome, awesome choice. Giving her a spell block every 17 seconds. And some nice stats to go along with that. So that is Rax on top lane. We will see a pig like stay out on Slardar. Just dashing away from the air, but catching it uh, on the back end. Arana just can't quite get away. And just buyback city going on, but it is not going to be enough for the Radiant team. I think that we are seeing the last moments. This is the Alamo right here, folks. But there, there is a there dying up. breed. Indeed. Queen of Fame just blinking out of uh, out of danger there. And the four staff out on Invoker to get himself out of trouble. He'll drop the rock. But uh, we'll see him hunted down by the uh, heat-seeking missile. Radiant team really, really going for... Oh, she doesn't realize that that invisibility did not actually save her. That Jim True site coming into play there. Lion knocked out of uh, out of existence by Astral Presence and gets an Earth Spike out on... Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, Nature's Prophet just doesn't pushes, happen. gets the last Rax, super creeps, mega creeps around. Yeah. Bit of a pure victory here for the uh, for the Radiant. Looks like they're going to push hard to see what they can do. Nope, I tell a lie, they're going to teleport back. Yeah, what are you lying for? Ooh. <laughs> I didn't even... That was a pun. Oh, there's the Divine Rapier. He's going full beast man mode. Gyrocopter's like, I'm not having any of this. We're pushing this. This is game. I don't even care. You know, he's going to die to spells, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. They know where he is, too. Look at this. They're going for him. Yep. Queen of Pain's cutting him off. I'm on the hunt. I'm after you. Oh, that damage, though. Oh, and she will blink beacon. out. The call down is out, but it will not catch a single soul. Woo. Heavens that to Betsy. Baby. Yeah. I think she just wanted to let him know, you know what, I, I, I can fight you. I will was, fight you. It was a Queen of Pain tickle. Met with a gyrocopter pickle. I should have been a baseball caster. Like Harry Carey. I like it. <laughs> Hi everyone. The Valkyr disconnected here. I bet he's going to get a nice tasty hot dog right now. <laughs> yeah, that happened. And it was amazing. Iwin Lannister. I don't remember Iwin being a character. But I've only watched the show. I'm fairly sure that's uh, that's Tyrion's middle name, is it not? I I don't know. I don't I don't think so. Tyrion Iwin Lannister. No, <laughs> and there's Queen of Pain with double damage. She's in trouble, though. She truly is. This could Ask really be a prison. Her, but we will uh -oh, see what coming from behind. Lots of damage. There it is. <laughs> it's on the ground. Pick it up. It's somebody pick it up. Dear. Pick it up. And she's got it. Up. <laughs> and that is the strongest queen of pain, with 198 plus 428. And she's just going to found the She's just diving the well, look at that. She's like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is. <sighs> Nature's prophet blowing his own horn. Not a terrible thing to do on Titanic Tuesday, let me tell ya. Player card. Wow, these are kind of neat. 
They have one of me in there somewhere. I can understand why. Yeah, it just has a, a toilet image on it. <laughs> wow, this is the uh, the something for everyone. Yes. Well, these player cards get kicked out too uh, fairly often. But yeah, uh, lots of treasures there. Uh, final item count, a couple of things that we uh, didn't pick up towards the end there. Looks like Disruptor did have a Ghost Scepter. That's kind of kind of a mistake against this team. You've got Lion, Invoker, Queen of Pain. There are so many spells there, I really don't know if that's going to behoove Disruptor that much. And I think that may have been part of why he was 3-14. and 14. Not a really strong play by Disruptor in that. Uh, other items, a couple four staffs, I think we caught those. Yeah. You might say instead of behooving him, it dehooved him. Yes. I'll be yeah. here all week. It was a ghastly choice, maybe. That works. Yeah. So you're uh, your man of the match. Hold on, I didn't expect her. Oh. Okay. Uh, that was a good one. I it liked was. it. Yeah. Uh, man of the week. Oof. Rubik. No, I'm kidding. Uh, sorry, Rubik. I'm going to go Queen of Pain. I really enjoyed Queen of Pain's play in this. Some really solid early ganks, uh, both up top and bottom, saved Marana. Marana actually did okay in this game, and you and I were both worried that she was not going to be able to pull something out. Didn't have the best of farm. That's fine. Queen of Pain still brought the pain, helped out like her entire team was everywhere on the map, was getting kills, jumping into fights, initiating just like a Queen of Pain should, had a perfect item build, getting that Orchid first, building to it, and just doing massive damage to the uh, Dire team. What about yours, sir? I would have to agree. Queen of Pain was really uh, the one that got the thumbs up for me. I was actually, I was I was impressed with Nature's Prophet for, you know, um, actually being able to split push fairly effectively. Um, it did seem that a few times he just, he should have been with his team and decided not to be, so that was a little disappointing. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where um, it's not necessarily a bad thing for them to go off on their own. It just depends on how much farm they're stealing from other players, which can happen when they don't jungle and instead hit those lanes too much. And then on top of that, as you said, he really wasn't in there in a lot of the fights. Whereas Gyrocopter at least tried and managed to get a couple of kills. 18 and 4 is pretty nifty. Uh, I, you know, I, I would have given this to Gyrocopter, but I didn't think that he actually used his abilities that well. I didn't see a lot of really nice stuns out on players. I didn't see him uh, early game, especially. A Gyrocopter can be a really aggressive player. Murata, it's actually probably really hard to be aggressive against her, but man, go top roll fast. Go get a kill on some of those slower caster types who don't have boots yet. Lion especially, right? Mm. So, uh, uh, what about... Uh, what about the guy that you uh, you would throw your life vest to, but not in time? I would have to say that's probably Rubik. Um, just out of position quite a bit. Uh, and, you know, there were there were a few moments where he was clutch with that arrow, but it seemed like he was relying on that stolen arrow as opposed to um, really being a little bit more flexible and, and picking up some more stolen spells. Uh, if he did, then I missed it, but it didn't really feel like he was... Uh, using that to the maximum of his abilities, so I just I wasn't really that impressed. Um, you know, it was sort of a toss-up between him and Disruptor, but I thought this Disruptor was actually a little bit more helpful to the team. So uh, I would say, yeah, it's going to be Rubik. Interesting. My choice was Slardar, bottom yep. line. Uh, you know, Slardar was not purchasing items. Look at his item build right now. Mm. There's nothing there. He's got nothing. This is a guy who quite constantly had around 500 gold and then would lose it to deaths and then build up 500 gold and then lose it again to a death and i'm not joking if he had at least purchased some circlets and some bracers made those you know, or circlets and made those into bracers and eventually made those into drums he probably could have done a little bit more but he was worthless in these fights mm. and th this game was was on the edge of being one or it was being held up by gyrocopter and outworld devourer these other guys were not in the fight and yeah you're right the rubik and disruptor as well the one so, thing i like about slardar was that he was um you know applying his debuff which was giving them the vision that they needed in a lot of key moments which i suppose really is just a matter of hitting the right key at the right time uh so you know what you're probably right here uh i'm not going to change my opinion but i'm going to say you've you've made a strong argument 
Yeah, he, he doesn't really have a significant amount of blast hits. He doesn't have a... Denies are kind of hard for melee, so I'll give him that. But his gold per minute and his experience per minute mirror that of a support Rubik. Mm. You know, that's just... That's not good. If he had at least given himself a little bit of a damage boost, bought something. He may, I didn't even see him use his bottle. He wasn't bottling runes from what I had seen. Hmm. So Fair enough. That being said, I think that that's going to uh, call it for our Titanic Tuesday. Uh, a pretty pretty long match. I'm glad that we actually had one that lasted a while. It, it was... You know, kind of a uh, battle for the Radiant team, especially because they had two supports that weren't really doing much, as you had suggested, as well as a strong strength character not doing much. But uh, a noble defense by Gyrocopter and Outworld Devourer. For sure. Well, that was uh, definitely a, a Titanic Tuesday that we will file away and say, you know what? Good game. We will, we will hold this in our hearts and... Our hearts will go on, you know. I, toot toot. Yeah. Well, that that was Titanic Tuesday, and uh, hopefully you'll have a chance to join us tomorrow for Team Fight Wednesday night, uh, and we will be back around. Oh yeah, uh, uh, two announcements. I, I think we're starting later tomorrow night. Is that Fair correct? Night. Yep. Yeah, we're going to start a little bit later. I think probably around. Uh, I, I guess it's ten thirty CDT. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And uh, eight thirty PDT. That's right. Okay, and uh, a secondary announcement here. I think I'm going to hopefully start the Stamos says sat, uh, on Saturdays. So we'll see if that's what's going on. I'm going to call it Stamos says. It's pretty cool. So if you have replays that you want, we're going to set some rules up. I'll have those published by tomorrow or Thursday. You can submit based off those rules, and if they meet the guidelines, we'll take a look at the replay, and I'll go through it, and uh, we'll see what we can do. We'll watch the match and maybe give, give you some good advice. So, Sounds fantastic. Cool. All right, folks. Well, this has been uh, Titanic Tuesday. I am 3PO. And this is Stamos Lives. And we'll see